Life isn't fair. And you know what? It can't be. Here's the problem. The word fair doesn't mean justice or equity or indeed anything very specific. Instead, it's become a sort of all-purpose statement of moral superiority. Superiority tinged paradoxically with victimhood. Now, fairness does have an exact meaning in certain contexts. For example, if we're playing a game, fairness means that the rules should be applied impartially. When we're kids and our parents and teachers set the rules, the word still has that essential meaning. It's a young person's way of demanding what we might call equality before the law. But as we get older, the word becomes more of a whine. In the mouth of a teenager, trust me on this, it's not fair means, more often than not, you won't let me do something I want. In recent years, though, something odd has happened. Adults have started using the word in much the same way that teenagers do. More than in any previous generation, people today retain their teenage sense of self-centeredness. They use it's not fair as a catch-all complaint, as an assertion of wounded entitlement. Look at a Google graph of the use of the word fairness. From around 1965, it looks like the proverbial hockey stick. Flat, and then it suddenly shoots up. We've developed a fairness obsession. But what do we mean when we use the word? Do we mean justice? Do we mean equality? Do we mean need? Or do we mean something else? Suppose you and Jane buy a cake together. You pay $6 and Jane pays $4. What would be the fair way to split it up? You could do it on the basis of proportionality. In other words, you get 60% of the cake and Jane gets 40%. Or you could do it on the basis of strict egalitarianism, half each regardless of who paid what. Or you could do it on the basis of wealth. Jane has much less money than you for non-essentials like cake, so maybe she should get the larger share. A case can be made for each approach. But the beauty of the word fair is that it doesn't require you to come down clearly in favour of any of them. It gives you the cover of ambiguity. So, for example, when a politician says, we want the rich to pay their fair share, he doesn't usually mean that he wants the rich to pay taxes at the same rate as everyone else. He means that he wants them to pay extra. The word fair lets him present higher rates of taxation as a form of justice. But only if we don't think about it too hard. That's the beauty of it. Fair doesn't ultimately mean proportionate or impartial or equal. You can use it to mean almost any positive thing you like. I want fairness generally means, look at me, I'm a nice person. Demanding fairness lets you tell the world how decent you are without your actually having to contribute a penny. It's a kind of vanity. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? Let's get real. The only way to distribute the cake is to see how much people are prepared to pay for their slice. Sure, that could leave a banker with a bigger slice than a baker. Sure, we might not like that distribution. We might feel that the baker is doing something more valuable than the banker. He's making delicious pastries while the money man doesn't seem to be making anything except money for himself. But how can we judge someone else's economic worth? You might want bakers to be paid more than bankers. I might want teachers to be paid more than movie stars. Since we all have our own preferences, the only way to measure the economic value of a service is to see how much others are prepared to pay for it. That's what the market does. It aggregates our preferences. It doesn't ask us in the abstract what we think someone else deserves. It tests in reality how many hours of our own labour we're prepared to put in in exchange for a product or a service. Under every other economic system, our relations are mediated by Accidents of birth and social caste and financial rewards are determined by favouritism. The free market alone gives everyone the same rights. My money is as good as yours. You can't get fairer than that. I'm Daniel Hannan, President of the Initiative for Free Trade and author of Inventing Freedom for Prager University. 
This video was made possible by a generous donation from the David and Janet Pollock Foundation. Thank you for watching this video. To help keep PragerU videos free, please consider making a tax-deductible donation.